Our people in general, our women in particular, don't give us enough latitude to be our full spectrum of men. You give that latitude to white men who are the reason that this whole thing happened in the first place. Because the fucked up thing about it is we were told stories about ourselves by these people. We believe those stories and then we run away to those people. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. What do you think would need to happen for us as black men and black women to find our way back to each other and, and build happy, healthy, productive relationships? I feel like the same energy we put into everything else that we're passionate about, we should take that same energy and put it into ourselves. I feel like if you want a person to get the best version of you, then you need to heal yourself. I mean, like past trauma, the things like you don't forget things, but can you handle yourself? Are you emotionally stable? Like if something that once triggered you comes up again, are you going to know how to handle it? Or are you going to allow that particular thing to trigger you the same way it did back then because if so then that means you're not growing and I also feel like learn I mean that comes with self-love but learning yourself like I feel like if a lot of people took time to learn themselves then a lot of bad relationships would end because now you're attracting what you are and I'm not saying a person just like you I'm talking about a person that is compatible with you. A lot of people date, but they aren't compatible with each other. You have a person that needs a guy that's a little bit more emp empathetic, but because they have history with the guy that's nonchalant, it's like two bulls like going head to head. If this guy knows he not, he's not ready for a female with emotions and he needs a female a little bit more masculine, then let that female be with someone who would cater to her feelings a little bit more and you find you someone who maybe isn't as emotional as her. So I do feel like it's learning love language, compatibility, learning yourself, learning what you like and don't like. Because the person that you dated at 25 is not going to be the same person you dated at 29 if that person is elevating to be honest, the person I was this week won't be the person I am next week if I'm elevating. So dig into yourself, learn yourself, learn what you like, learn what you don't like. Um, date, actually date. Don't date with expectation. I used to do that. I used to date with expectation and I allowed myself to get let down because I went in looking for a part, like, like, is he a husband? Automatically. But that's not where that starts off. It starts off with a friendship. So can you even have a conversation with this? Can, you, can I be around you for hours and hours at a time when we not saying nothing and be aggravated? Like, can, can we not talk and me just be happy around you? Can we have a talk and then we get excited because we mentally we hear a lot of people don't be mentally connected. They just be physically connected. So that's why a lot of things don't work. I feel like, honestly, if you were mentally connected with someone, I mean, think about our mental health and when we're not feeling the best and when we're thinking negative or when we're down on ourselves or when we don't know if we can actually accomplish something that can mentally take a toll on us so if we're not right mentally and we know how that throws our day off 
why do you not think you need to be mentally and like compatible with the person you're talking to? So, so what do you think you as an individual? And let's just talk about you as an individual. Okay. What do you think is left for you to do or work that you need to, inner work you need to do to attract the caliber of man that you might want? Just keep heightening my vibration. Just not focusing on finding a man so much and focusing on myself. Because when you focus on a man or wanting a man, then typically you run into the ones that you're not supposed to run into because you're so focused on it. Um, I heard a guy speak yesterday that said, when, when you focus on something so much, sometimes you can actually push that away. So when you're focusing on a guy so much, then Every guy that comes by, you're all them, is this it? Is, is this one it? Is this one it? And then they're like, oh, he's not it. I'm so sick of dudes. Like, I'm tired of it. Like, I'm just tired of it. I'm, I'm saying this because I've, I've been in the shoes saying this stuff. I'm so tired of guys. Like, I'm just over it. I keep dealing with these same type of guys. But it's like, don't focus on that. Just focus on your goals, what you're trying to do, keep elevating. He's going to come. He's going to come. He might be watching you. You don't even know he's watching you, but he's just observing how you move. Keep striving. Keep pushing. It's going to eventually happen. It, the thing is, we be wanting it to happen on our time. And that's not how the universe works. It's not your time. It's when you're ready for that. We be wanting stuff that we're not ready for because if you get that good man that you asked for, you get that good woman that you asked for, are you going to be ready for that? We don't always be ready. We be thinking we be ready because that's what we want. But that's not what we need at the time. So some women are 40, 50 years old and are waiting and it's not just like a waiting because I know I deserve better. It's also an overestimation of what you actually deserve, quote unquote, like on paper. Right. Um, so you'll have because I think what happens is women grade themselves on a masculine curriculum. So they'll say, for instance, I have a master's degree. Men should think I'm more attractive. I make six figures. Men should think I'm more attractive. I have more wisdom. I have more experience. Men should think I'm more attractive. When the reality is those things make you less attractive to men, actually. So why, why do you think so many women go into their old age still evaluating themselves on a masculine curriculum and waiting for this man, this mythical man, to see her? Because women have been taught to be strong black women and they've been taught that they don't need a man till they get to the point where they realize like okay now I'm ready for a man but when they're ready they're looking at the younger version of their selves and it's like you're not that person anymore so you need to date within side your range, but a lot of people like to date outside their range because they're not actually looking at themselves. Like that person that you think you are to offer, you aren't actually that person. So you probably need to date someone that's more compatible with you. Like for instance, if I'm a 48, 49, 50 year old woman, but I want and I'm like, you know, you know, I'm attractive, but I don't necessarily look how I did when I was like 29. But now I want a dude that look like that and got have it all together. It's like, well, you 
A lot of people go for people that aren't. <sighs> Tell the truth. <laughs> A lot of people do go for people that's outside their league because they think that they are higher than they actually are and then get disappointed when it don't go that way. But you was reaching too high for the stars. And it's, I'm not even saying by looks, even what you have to offer. Age doesn't mean that you have a lot to offer. Age is just age. It's a lot of people that's 45, 48, and still don't have it together. But then it's women that's 32 that do have it together. So no matter how old you are, a man is not going to want to date an um, a intellectually or immature, emotionally immature female. It doesn't matter if you 30, 40, 50. And I'm talking about a man. A boy, he'll put up with it because he can be like, I'm just about to go to my other shawty house. When you calm down, I'll be back. But a man is not going to deal with that. Like, a man, because his peace matters. So since we, since we know, like, a man isn't going to prioritize your master's degree or your experience or your six-figure job, what do you think that type of man does prioritize when he's looking for a woman? Depending on the guy, but Typically. can you, can you, will, do I feel like you will make a good wife? Do I feel like you'll make a good mother? How do you make me feel? Do you bring me peace or do I feel like you add more to my stress? I feel like those are the top three. Yeah. Damn. I ain't got nothing to say. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. You got it. Huh. What um what are some final thoughts, final words? What what do you think is is black love, black men and black women being together? Is that a worthwhile pursuit? Or do you think it's too late or we need to just women need to divest, men need to go to Thailand? Like, do you feel like we need to reinvest back into each other and try to rebuild the black family? I feel like your soulmate and who you're supposed to be with is who you want to be with, no matter if they're Black, Asian, Caucasian, Indian. Who you're meant to be with is who you're meant to be with. But I do feel like, as a culture, we need to stop breaking each other down. If, if this isn't for you, then don't let it be for you, but don't tear this person down because it's not for you. Everybody's not the same. Everybody's not like, I'm not for everybody. And everybody isn't for me. But just because that's the case, I don't have to speak negative. Speak life into us more. Speak love into us. I, I feel like it's so much hate that the hate is over-trumping the love. Um, and love doesn't, love is an action word. So love isn't, oh my God, you're beautiful. I just want to kiss all on your body. Like, Love could literally be, look, man, that's a beautiful family. Keep keep pushing. Like, pour love into that back family instead of, oh, well, he, he doing this good for her. She must be holding him hostage. She Like, no, like, speak life into it. Um, I feel like the, the black couples that we do have, you need to pour into each other. But me personally, because I've dated outside my race, I don't feel like if your soulmate is not a black person, you're not wrong for that. You're not wrong for that. If it is a black person, a black man, black woman, then yeah, but pour into each other. But I don't, I don't feel like... You think we should prioritize each other. So what I'm saying is maybe... Your soul, I don't believe in soulmates, but like maybe your soulmate is a white woman. But should you start the conversation with like, I'm going to exhaust all my options with black women first. Or I'm going to exhaust all my options with black men first. Should we prioritize each other? 
Not in that aspect. I don't feel like. I feel like you need to flow with the energy. Like, just because I'm just an energy person. So, like, I don't have a certain look. Like, you know, I'm tiny, so I can't do, you know what I'm saying? I'm tiny, but it, it's more about how you make me feel. Like, it's certain things you want a person to take care of themselves, but how do you make me feel? And if you are, like, Asian and you're a little bit taller than me and you nerdy, but you make me feel like the best woman in the world, then we're here. But if you're a black man and you make me feel that same way, we're here. But that's, that's not... My biggest issue when dating is I am a independent feminine woman. So a lot of black men. You just said I'm a tall, short person to a lot of men. That's how they heard that. I, I know, I'm about to break it down. So a lot of men see independent women in their masculinity. But it's not often that they see independent women in their, on their feminine side. So for me, it's like, I get a lot of the times I'm too good to be true. I've, and I've asked like any guy that I've seriously dated, what are the worst things you could say about me? And it was, you don't like to go to bed or like unresolved issues. I like to talk about it, whether we agree to disagree, because I don't like lingering things. Um, another thing was I'm emotional. Um, so to me, I do get, mm, you're too good to be true. And it's like, I find myself having well, out of because I've done it, working twice as hard to show the guy like I actually am who I say I am, because they feel like it's rare. They feel like it can't be. You you can't be nice. You can't. I can't be vulnerable with you. You can't have yourself together. There's no way. It's, it must be something wrong. You can't have no kids, and like it's something wrong. But there are women out there who. Consider yourself how value just like men do. I don't want to give myself to anyone who can't cherish it. I don't know shades of baby mamas that do what they're supposed to do, but I don't want to be a baby mama. I call one a family. Whatever that looked like, whether it's a, well, a black man with Indian, Korean, what? I would say this. I would say this. And, and you made a good point earlier when you said men are a lot more practical. And for me, and part of my message and part of my work and part of my mission is to encourage us, particularly men, to be more pragmatic about love. And for me, like I have a 17 year old brother. I told him you have to bring home a black woman. It's a priority because who we choose is more of a political decision than a feelings decision. Because you know when people say, oh, money only stays in the black community for so many hours, right? Part of the reason is because when you leave your community and you make something of yourself, economically, you just helped them. You're not helping us. So for me, everything is black first and who I choose to love, who I choose to create with, who I choose to build with must be black first. Now, I'm not saying that for some men, they might not have tried and it didn't work out and they went a different way. But I think in context with history, if we're not willing to maybe even sacrifice our feelings and vibes to put ourselves first, there's no point of any of the stuff we're marching about 
or protesting about or voting for. And it all starts with a black family. Because at the end of the day, I want, I want you to raise a fantastic son. And I want when that son goes out into the world, he brings home somebody who reminds you of you. That little girl that you were, right? You see her in the great son, great black man that you raised, you know, and vice versa. So I would encourage you to like, think about the, the political part of love. I have, I have, um, I've thought about that, but I also feel like if you and a person are designed to be together, it's going to work and you're going to get through it no matter what challenges are faced. It doesn't matter the race. I get, if I could be with a black man, I want to, I, I would want to be with a black man. I, I would want to, but I also realized and I'm being transparent in my dating, how I'm designed, because black men have been brought up to disconnect with anything that has emotion, and I am emotional, then it's difficult for me to date black men because to them, because they're not tapped into their emotions, and I actually know my emotions. Like I know the difference between angry and frustrated. I know the difference between joyful and happy. Then my emotions become overly dramatic or you're too emotional because they're brought up to disconnect with anything that has emotions. So, I mean, if you technically want to put it this way, we are starting to not like each other. Because men are brought up to, black men are brought up to disconnect with emotion. Women are emotional beings. Women are brought up to be strong black women. So now we don't feel like we need a black man because we could take care of it all. So now it's like, well, if you ain't going to pay my bills, I don't need you. So now it's, so on the female side, because I'm an emotional being, it has been difficult for me to date black men. And so what, what men have been more um, accommodating of your emotions? Let's talk about it. Caucasian men. Why? I couldn't tell you why, but I've been, I've dated black men who knew how to open the door for me and knew how to do things for me. But ultimately it was something that was expected, like sex. Like, I know if I'm doing all of this for you, you you're going to do something. Even though it wasn't asked, you're willingly doing this. I haven't had that issue with Caucasian men. I never, sex was never brought up. They just wanted to just love on me. And I mean, to the point where like, I dated this one guy and he would pick my food up from the table and carry it to my car. He would hold the door for me. When I got in the car, he would close the door. He would get on his side, like. Let me, let me ask you this. Okay. Because I, I think you're hitting on something very, 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 very important. Do you think black women are easier to love than white women? Do I feel like black women are easier to love than white women? Or deal with from a man's perspective? If I had to go based off of what I know, because I, I have friends of different cultures. Um, because a lot of females are, black women are masculine these days. I mean, because if you think about households, right? And this is just a general standpoint. Um, 
Caucasian couples or households are brought up to be a family and face the problem. We're brought up to face the problem without the family. So we're brought up to do everything on our own while they do things together. No matter if Billy then shot up somebody tires or Rebecca then cursed her dad out, what happens in their family, they try to work through it. They try to get, you know, the necessary right steps for their children or for their partner. Um, I feel like sometimes a Caucasian woman is looked at as being more submissive because they're more family oriented versus women. We black women are brought up to be independent. So we don't always think about family until it's too late. So a black man getting with a white woman would be him taking the easy way out, correct? Not always. It depends on the company. No, but generally. Oh, generally? Generally, because they're this, more yeah. submissive and feminine. Yeah. So I'm encouraging black men to not take the easy way out. Right. But black women aren't encouraging themselves to not take the easy way out because as a black man, I have to... My favorite word is due diligence. And that's why I'm a history nerd. I have to understand what happened that led to black women being masculine and being rough around the edges. Right. And I have to be willing to, this is a metaphor, go to the black owned business that my food might not come out the way I like it. Right. But ultimately I'm going to the black owned business versus taking the convenient route and going to Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. And I feel the same exact way with us. So even though black women are harder to deal with as a black man who understands history, I must commit myself to prioritizing you. Right. That energy isn't on the other side. Why is that? Because black women are telling each other, just take the easy way out. Because the, the same reasons that led to your masculineness are some of the same reasons that led to my disconnect from emotion. I'm supposed to empathize with you. Do I get empathy in return? Or is it just white men are easier to deal with and they oh, treat no. me better? Um, are you saying from my perspective or from a general? Because from a general, it's going to be different from my give me, Give me yours. Um, before I actually started dating outside my race, all I dated was black men. Different types, different backgrounds, different everything. And every single black man I came across, I'm, I'm not going to say man, because I feel like it's the difference between a man and a boy. So I will say a black man, if you come across a black man, cherish that black man. It's the difference between that and a boy. And a lot of us deal with black boys. Because y'all don't like black men. And I don't feel like we're ready for black men. But that's my point. And what I mean by that is, like, the, the big movement right now is divest, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see women who have ran through the Pookies and the Ray Rays, and they say, I'm tired. All these men are dusty. Black men are dusty. And then they end up with a nerdy white dude. And what's interesting about that is these same women, when they were younger, more desirable, overlooked nerdy black men. So you're saying to us, these attributes that I'm gonna value in Billy, I don't value it, value those in you. And then when I go to Billy, I'm gonna claim that you guys are these things. When in black men, you didn't nurture those attributes. Right. You encourage us to be emotionless because that's who gets pussy. Right. And then eventually when you get tired of giving your pussy to these niggas that you encourage us to be. Right. And that you raised us to be. Right. You then run away and say that all of us are like that. Right. And the nerdy guy, like um, one of the interviews, he was talking about how, you know, some women are going to see Childish Gambino with a white woman and be like, he's a sellout. 
Y'all weren't checking for Childish Gambino back right. in the day. Right. Right. <laughs> now you end up with a white dude who's similar to Childish Gambino, but men are saying, our people in general, our women in particular, don't give us enough latitude to be our full spectrum of men. You give that latitude to white men who are the reason that this whole thing happened in the first place. Because the fucked up thing about it is we were told stories about ourselves by these people. We believe those stories and then we run away to those people. The whole point of this, that I, the, the whole point of this, I'm trying to get black people back together. I'm trying to get us to prioritize each other because anything else makes them win. Every black man who gets on and gets a white girl, that's money that's out of our community. Right. Mm-hmm. 